retired general officers, and may I request that the retired general officers who are sitting on this side please stand for uh, an applause. Thank you very much indeed for coming. <laughs> the members of Defence Foreign Relations, uh, led by uh, Honourable uh, Koech, distinguished guests, senior officers, both uniformed and non-uniformed, officers, MWAC chairperson and members of MWAC, Defence Forces Sergeant Major, Askari Wenzangu Hamjambo. Hamjambo. KDF. KDF. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for being here this afternoon. Your presence makes this historic day even more special. The CDF has intimated and read my testimonial. And I would like to thank him and all who have sent messages of best wishes during this transition period uh, after, as I proceed uh, for my retirement. I thank you all uh, for your kind words and the honor you bestow upon my family and I as we disengage from the Kenya Defense Forces after 88 days. I would like to say that serving for 44 years and ascending to, the, to become the 10th Chief of the Kenya Defense Forces is a huge favor and blessings from the Almighty God to any officer. I consider myself therefore very blessed and favored to have had the opportunity to lead such a gallant professional institution in different capacities and now as I live as the CDF. I would like to take this moment to express my profound gratitude to all those who made my military life remarkable. I'm grateful in particular to both my commanders in chief his Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Dr. William Ruto, and his predecessor, Honorable Uhuru Kenyatta, who have shown tremendous trust and confidence in my leadership of the KDF, without which I could not have accomplished the aspirations that I set out to undertake in my strategic vision on assumption of CDF's position three years ago. I thank them for their consideration towards the military, their unwavering commitment to share timeless strategic guidance, and for their unparalleled support uh, to me during my tenure as CDF, and by extension uh, to all KDF's officers and service members. I thank the incoming CDF, or rather the CDF currently, General Francis Ogola and the three service commanders uh, seated here, uh, starting with Major General Jimson Mutai, the commander of the Navy. Thank you. Major General John Ogola, uh, John Omenda, uh, the commander of the Air Force, and Lieutenant General Peter Njiro, the commander of the Navy, uh, of the Army. As part of my strategic team, this team ensured that the KDF remained mission ready in responding to diverse operational and administrative engagements. We have collectively, over the past three years, achieved our military objective of defending Kenya's territorial integrity and sovereignty. I also thank my key staff at the Defense Headquarters, starting with the Assistant Chief of Defense Forces in charge of operations, doctrine, and training, Major General Leuria. Thank you very much. I also thank the Director of Military Intelligence, uh, Major General Farah. Thank you very much. I also like to thank the Assistant Chief of Defense Forces in charge of personnel logistics, Major General Afazad Kyugu. Thank you. 
And lastly, but not least, the Director of Medical Services, uh, Major General Dr. Nganga. Thank you very much. All of you, in your respective branches, you provided me with proper advice to be able to lead this honorable institution. I would also like to thank your respective branch heads for their participation in conceptualizing and implementing our ideas that ensured we remain ahead of the curve in a complex and rapidly mutating security environment. To all formation commanders who are here, I recognize and appreciate your contribution, your commitment and dedication to serve in operations and other administrative tasks, enabling the accomplishment of our diverse missions. To all of you KDF soldiers, you have demonstrated immense adaptability in performance of various operational tasks and those related to national development. Your delivery of KDF mandate has been exemplary across the diverse operational theaters, one within our borders, along the Kenya-Somalia border, in Somalia, and in Eastern DRC. You continue to optimize professionalism and mission readiness, and I thank you. Without a doubt, you are the arrowhead. My gratitude will be lacking if I do not re reflect on the support accorded to me by my dear wife, Tabitha our children and grandchildren who are here with us. May I request that you stand, please. Asante Nisana. My dear Tabitha, has been the bedrock of our family, and I can never thank her enough for doing most of the heavy lifting for our family while I was consumed by exigencies of military work. I also want to thank Tabitha for her courage to initiate and establish programs to improve the welfare of military families. I applaud you and all other pioneers of the Military Wives Association of Kenya for your vision. You have mobilized and implemented a family-centric welfare model for the Kenya Defense Forces, wives and families. Ladies and gentlemen, when I joined the military on 18 May 1979, as a cadet officer at the age of 20, I was elated. I recognized that my luck and favor from the date of my enlistment has lingered on, designing a path that led me to this day. When I exit at the apex of the military leadership, it has been a wonderful journey. It has been a great adventure, and I have led and been led. I have learned and unlearned. I have appreciated the power of observation, speech, silence, diversity of persons, and perspectives. Above all, I have enjoyed the rare opportunity of experiencing the conundrum that is military leadership, and in the end, I have found all my experiences meaningful and of consequence. Beyond the celebrations and expression of gratitude, this is also an occasion on reflection. When I became CDF, I was beholden to seven objectives, which today characterize my tenor. I was persuaded that we needed to advance our training to achieve optimal mission readiness status. We needed to identify and bridge military engineering capabilities. We needed to attain modernization and assistance in equipment repair and refits. We needed to enhance our cyber and information systems capabilities. We needed to revamp military healthcare system we need, to improve, we need to improve personnel housing 
And lastly, we needed to strengthen military industrial innovation capacity. These were my big, my, my big ideas informed by the realities of our defense posture, which demands periodic review in order to meet our constitutional mandate and to deliver defense and security to the Kenyan people. In our collective scorecard, my team and I have done our best and the last three years with me as a leader have made an indelible mark in the history of our defense forces. We delivered whenever we were called upon and built high standards of professionalism and discipline. Sustaining KDF as one of the most efficient, modern and patriotic military force in the world. The military today is operating in a dynamic environment, regionally and internationally. And KDF remains a key player in contributing to global and regional peace and stability through various assignments with the United Nations, the African Union, and the Eastern African community. In this regard, our Ghana soldiers have registered significant successes in grading the terrorist group Al Shabaab and continue to restore peace and stability in Somalia under the umbrella of the African Transition Mission in Somalia, as well as, well as capacitating the Somali security forces to enable them to take up responsibility of ensuring stability of their nation as the African mission exits Somalia by December 2024. Our troops are also deployed in the Eastern DRC to stabilize that region under the Eastern Africa Community Regional Force. And I'm glad uh, today the former force commander of the Eastern African Regional Force, Major General Jeff Nyaga, is with us today. Thank you very much for your service. Moreover, in the international sector, KDF continues to collaborate and engage with varied international partners, consolidating and strengthening relations in matters of training, exercises, and operations, which continue to contribute to the sharpening of the arrowhead for mission readiness. Ladies and gentlemen, Back at home, our troops have been involved in various multi-agency operations and training exercises which have enhanced and ensured a collective and synergized approach in addressing national security challenges. Guided by the Constitution, the success of Operation Amani Boni in Labu, and Operation Rejesha Utulivu in Laikipia, and Operation Maliza Uhalifu in the North Rift, among others, is a clear demonstration of the value for multi-agency cooperation. As well, KDF's disaster response capability has been at the forefront in the overall crisis preparedness and response in the country. Further, in addressing capability gaps in education and training of personnel, KDF has continued to invest in education and training institutions aimed at developing strategic thinking, operational, as well as te tactical and technical capacities across all domains. The establishment of the National Defense University Aviation Center of Excellence and Counterinsurgency Terrorism and Stability Operation Training Center and the Cyber Warfare Training Center will greatly contribute to KTF's, KDF's ability to respond to varying threat environments. Wider engagements have also seen KDF deploy its skilled manpower and capabilities to, to assist national institutions as part of KDF's mandate. Successes realized in this area include the turnaround of the Kenya Meat Commission, the construction and establishment of the Kenya Shipyards Limited, revamping of the Kenya Railways, construction of Uhuru Gardens, uh, National Monuments and Museum, and the rehabilitation of Uhuru Park and City Park, among others. On health care matters, KDF continues to revamp its health care system to ensure a healthy fighting force, since we believe very strongly that a healthy force contributes to a secure nation. These efforts have happened across the country, from Isiolo to Garissa, from Manda to Mariakani, from Nakuru to Eldoret, and from Nairobi to Mombasa. This Ulinzi Sports Complex 
coupled with the nearby defense forces wellness center are contributing immensely to the wellness and healing of our troops and our families, thereby complementing our healthcare system. Consistent with my soldier-centric approach to welfare service, we developed a robust soldier-centric welfare framework aligned to meeting emerging challenges facing our officers and service members, which has involved a pursuit for the provision of decent housing to all personnel. Further, following enactment of the Veterans Act, the Defense Headquarter, we have now established a Veterans Affairs Directorate to manage the welfare uh, veterans affairs, to which I'm now the newest member. Ladies and gentlemen, finally, I would like to thank the people of Kenya for showing confidence and trust in the KDF and their continued support in our de deployments. In all these engagements that we, we undertake, we have endeavored to keep the Kenyan people well informed of our activities through KDF's strategic communication led, by, led, by, and, led and manned by a highly competent team of information operators. Time has come for me to spend the rest of my life with my family, enjoying my sunset years. I've cherished, cherished my time in the KDF, and as I hang my military boots today, I urge that KDF remains focused on the mandate, guided by the key tenets of being apolitical, subordination to civilian authority, and being professional at all times. From the deepest of my heart, I thank you all who have attended my change of command ceremony and for the courtesy you have shown me by coming and for the splendid gifts presented to me by the Ministry of Defense, uh, to me and my wife, to, by the Ministry of Defense and KDF staff, which I will always treasure. To the KDF family, it's a great to have lived and worked with you all. I urge that you extend the same support to General Francis Ogola, the CDF, as he leads KDF uh, to greater heights. Asante ni sana na mungu wa bariki. It is now my duty and pleasure to welcome the Cabinet Secretary for Defense, Honorable Adan Dwale, to make his speech. Honorable CS, please.